Mr. Fiorella, he, he said, he goes, didn't you introduce yourself as the owner of a marketing company? Right. And I said, yes. He goes, well, you know, don't you build social media applications? I said, yeah, we do. Yeah. He goes, well, then aren't you at fault for my mental health then? All right, well, welcome back everybody to another episode of Marketing on Tap. My name is Sam Fiorella. This is Danny Brown. Um, and today we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna introduce a beer. You are. I know, right? You've uh, you've trained me well, <laughs> Jedi, uh, Jedi Master. I still think we need a, an intro to the show. Um, what, what, the, what the topic's about while I pour the beer. Oh, okay. Because not only you all right, so maybe you haven't trained me all that well. Anyway, today, yeah, I think so. We uh, Today we're going to be talking about social media addiction. So um, I am attending social media camp in 2019 in Victoria, BC. And when they asked me, what are you passionate about? Um, you know, because I, I keynoted there and I talked about influence marketing. That's when our book released. That's they brought me in there mm-hmm. to do the keynote. So if I'm going to come back, I don't want to talk about influence marketing. I don't want to talk about marketing. I said, what's passionate? Uh, what They asked, what are you passionate about? And I said, right now, I am passionate about social media addiction and what it's doing to our mental health. Right. Um, you know, with the work that we do with the Friendship Bench, I've been uh, lecturing at colleges and universities across the country. And I'm talking to a lot of students. And increasingly, between those conversations and the research that I'm doing, I've discovered that there is a direct impact on our mental and physical health right. based on the amount of time we spend on social media, the, the number of platforms we get engaged in. But further, it's affecting businesses. It's affecting how we as consumers engage with marketing. So there's just so much negativity being built around this that it's not only affecting us personally, it's affecting our businesses. So I think this is going to be a really interesting topic that I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be, I've done a lot of research that I'm going to be uh, talking about at Social Media Camp. I'll be releasing it for the first time. But I thought this would be a good opportunity for maybe us to talk a little bit about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, no, for sure. So um, that's something that I know you're passionate about as well. But before we do that, we want to talk about this beer that you have poured. We do, yeah. I, well, we, we, we say we, we say Sam. Uh, Sam. Because you've actually been to this brewery I a couple of weeks back. Yeah, so maybe, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a break from our, our traditional uh, process here, and and I'll introduce the beer. Good Lot Brewing is a uh, a local brewer here in Caledon that we were introduced to by one of our friends, Bill, and he took me there. We were skiing one weekend, and he took me by, and it's this local farm. Um, they grow all of their own ingredients, so right. everything that's in here actually is grown right there in well, it's about thirty minutes from here, thirty five yeah, minutes yeah. north of here uh, in Caledon. There, their hops. Um, everything, uh, even like the water that they used comes off of, uh, for, well, at least for the ones that we're going to be drinking today. So the one that I, I bought six of them while I was there, I sampled <laughs> all of them. But of the one, the, the one that we're going to try today is called Farmstead Ale Lot One. Lot One. Lot okay. One. And, um, or Lab One, not Lot One, excuse me, Lab One. It's 6.2% ABV, 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 38 IBUs. So That's I think you're good. going to like that one for that reason. Um, they they're using what they call nugget hops uh, and cascade. So these are the things that and you're going to notice is a really distinct aroma to this uh, that they introduced me to. Anyway, let's just uh, give it a shot. Alrighty. I really like these guys up there. Anna, here we go. Oh, we, oh, have we also have a new uh, cam. We have an Anna cam. Oh, today. we have an Anna cam today. Yeah, Robert um, is uh, is not with us today, so we have an Anna cam. So maybe I'll do that too. All right, guys. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Anna. Mm. Hang on. So, Anna, what do you think? Nope, not Anna approved. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> All righty. Well, we we got rid of Robert because he doesn't like uh, craft beer. Now we got Anna. Yeah. We thought we were this wasn't going to be an upgrade. This is good. I like I know, it. I like it. I really like this uh, brewery. Mm. But caramel almost coming through this really soft. Yeah, I do. I like it right now. They're building. They got a barn that they're building, and um, where there's going to actually be their their tasting room, their tap room, 
Uh, but right now they're working out of a shipping container. <laughs> their, their tap room is a shipping container right on the middle of their awesome. farm. It's a fantastic experience. Any of you guys that are local, go check them out. But let's get back to the topic. Yeah. So, Danny, what are your thoughts? How how negative is social media on our mental health? Let's start there, just in general. I, I think it's obviously, you know, I mean, there was a, a study that um, Huffington Post po- uh, published last year that showed that social media addiction and what it does to our mental health leads to substance abuse. It's like a, a primer mm-hmm. to lead to substance abuse, which obviously is not good. If you look on Instagram under the hashtag social media addiction, yeah. there's over there's almost 4,300 posts purely on that hashtag. If you look on Twitter under the same hashtag, there's a whole bunch of posts about social media addiction, how it's harming people, their health is going down, their mental health is suffering. So it's clearly an issue. And the more the networks make new features to drag us back on constantly, the more we're going to suffer, I think. Well, in this case, I'm going to agree with you. Um, I do believe that there is a, not I believe, I can read from the science. I know that science is not a popular thing these days, but um, Mm. I do believe in the science and the the results that I'm seeing from studies that universities are putting out Um, in terms of the negative effects. What happens, what bothers me about social media right now is that it's gamifying us to use it more. Yeah. Right. One of the things that I've learned in one of the studies that I just read um, is what they, the effects of negative cascades. Um, and th- basically what the test did was to, we are going to have a group of students watch a movie and then we're going to put out a, every one of them is going to post something on social media with neutral language. Like it was okay. It, it was fine. Yeah. I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. And then they were going to post something with very negative language, extreme negative language. Like I hated this. It was the worst movie ever. The, uh, the, uh, the lead singer was it, horrid, uh, you know, should kill themselves. The, the, the actress is anorexic. Wow. You know what I mean? Like just as many like negative things as they could say. And then they charted the effect of, those uh, posts, how many people liked the posts, one versus the other, how many re- shares were there, yeah, yeah. how many responses. And it's funny because the neutral ones just hung there next to no reaction. The same people with the same audience on their negative posts with really negative words blew up. Wow. Right. And had like a hundredfold, in, uh, uh, I guess, viralness to them in terms of the number of people that were commenting and joining. And what they noticed is the more negative or the more extreme the comments were, the more negative and the more extremes the replies were. Right. So it, like, it fed itself. And this is something, so they're calling it the, the negative cascade effect, in that websites now, social media, uh, LinkedIn, um, uh, certainly Facebook, they are gamifying the experience to give us what we want. Mm -hmm. Not only what we want, what's going to get us to stay on sites longer. Right. Like how do they, how do these guys make money? Well, exactly. Eyeballs. Yeah. Right. The the more for the advertisers and for the brands that are on the the platform to start with. Exactly. So the only way that they're going to be able to make more money is to keep us on longer. The way to keep us on longer is to give us more or to put in front of us what's going to then get us to respond more. Yeah. And so it's all of this gamification to keep us on. You know what I mean? If you start searching conspiracy theories, guess what's going to happen, right? They're going to start giving you more and more (laughs) of that kind of stuff, right? Because everything, whether you're, you know, you're you're on the left or you're on the right of the political spectrum or whether you're talking about uh, global warming or whether you're talking about religion It doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be anything political today. They are trying to encourage you to do more and more extreme, um, have more extreme conversations in order to get you on because they know that that's what's going to keep you there. And that is now starting to play with our minds. Yeah. Right. So one of the the questions that came up to me, uh, because somebody called me out, right? I was doing one of these lectures and I was talking about these studies. And one of the students, and this is what I want to ask you. One of the students said to me, well, Mr. Fiorella, he, he said, he goes, didn't you introduce yourself as the owner of a marketing company? Right. And yeah. I said, yes. He goes, well, you know, don't you build social media applications? I said, yeah, we do. Yeah. He goes, well, then aren't you at fault for my mental health then? Right? Leave it to kids. I, I mean. That's a good question. It was a good yeah. question. Actually, it was the kind of question I probably would have asked if I was him just because of how snarky I am. <laughs> but for me, 
what I thought was yes and then no and then yes and then I didn't know how to answer them. So what do you think? Do we bear responsibility as marketers and as social media platforms for the negative mental health that we're creating out there? I think yes and no. Um, to a degree because we build what we want. You know, like marketing is all about desire. Right? Mm -hmm. We want people to desire our products, our, our services, our client services, products, etc. So desire immediately is driving towards, you know, um, addiction because the more you desire it, the more you'll be addicted to try do whatever you need to do to actually get, you know, what you're after. So the very fact that we need to sell on social media to drive to websites, to yeah. get, you know, clients' products bought, et cetera, we are partly responsible for that. I do also believe, though, there's a part of responsibility on the individual um, when it comes down to, you know, how often you use a social network, how often you check your smartphone, because the amount of time you spend on something is going to, you know, correlate to the amount of time you see something and you're encouraged to do something. So you mentioned um, we're being gamified to use yeah. uh, networks more. Um, I, I noticed Facebook, I noticed this in the last month or so, they've started giving you little badges next to your name uh, when you're in groups yeah. and, and you're posting uh, and it depicts what kind of person you are. So you're a visual storyteller, you're a picture person, you're a conversationalist or whatever. So if you're a, a visual storyteller, and, and they don't show you're a troll, you're an asshat, right? Exactly. You know, so so they're they're saying, okay, I'm a visual storyteller, but I actually want to be a conversationalist. So I'm going to do what I need to do to become that conversationalist. Right. You know, so I, I think yes, I do think that the marketers have some responsibility, but I don't think we we have all the responsibility. There has to be some point where self. Yeah, you know what? I disagree. I, I'm going to disagree in a way because I, I don't believe I've been really been thinking about this a mm. lot because I've been rap, trying to justify what we do for a living, uh, knowing that I myself have been affected negatively. Yep. My, my mental health has definitely been affected, you know, uh, with social media over the last 15 years. But I don't think it is. I mean, if, if we are a business, our clients that hire us are a business. They're going to use whatever channels that works for them that people will engage in. Uh, and I think that's what business is, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Yeah. I don't think it is a business's responsibility to um, to change the way that it does business necessarily or to change the way that it markets or we as marketers not recommending social media because we know that it's feeding this negativity online. It is up to the individual. Now, that said, can a business take steps to be the better man, you know, I think there might be a way that they could leverage saying this, um, taking a leadership role mm -hmm. to their advantage yeah. if they do it with, you know, with, with true altruism and then it's not just a marketing gimmick, right. yeah. maybe they could do that and make it work for themselves. But I really do think though, that there's an education that's required. You know I mean? I think maybe social media platforms should look at some kind of self-regulation Right. If they were to do that and then provide education, just like the anti-smoking. Actually, you were part of uh, a large group before that um, was involved in online gaming. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. And I remember one of the things that your organization did back then was promote um, uh, alcoholics, channel. not alcoholics, gambling anonymous or something like that. Whatever yeah, that it was group like, was called. Yeah. It's like um, I can't remember now. But yeah, it was the we actually had it on our website. Right. It was like a resource where, you know, you could go and based on your profile, uh, our platform would recommend you, okay, you can only spend 10 minutes right. playing this. See, and I think that's a great example. Same thing with the smoking industry. And of course, the smoking industry, it was forced upon them. But right. It wasn't voluntary at all. But I think social media is starting to get to that point where it has the same addictive factors mm -hmm. um, that's manufactured right into the workflow. So this is not something that just happens. Right, this is yeah. manufactured by social media platforms and by we marketers when we develop these gamification platforms for you know our marketing campaigns and, and contests. I think they need to step up and identify the way that you pointed out. They can tell that you're a, a social storyteller or that you post a right, lot of, yeah. you know, whether you post a lot of photos or you leave a lot of comments or you respond a lot. They know who you are. They know all about your personality. They know about your habits. Well, why not identify you as potentially at risk right. and yeah. say, hey, here's some support or like the gaming, you know, the, the, uh, the lottery and, and gaming says so you can mm -hmm. only spend so much time because we've detected that you're spending right. way too much time and you're having a problem. And could the network then actually limit your time 
based on logins. Right, and that, that's going to create another, all yeah, yeah, that's going to create all kinds of arguments out yeah. there. And I'm sure for Peter, we might even see it in the comments. So give us your thoughts in the comments. You know, should a social media platform actually limit somebody that they think is addicted? Right. Well, it takes me back to the story last month where um, Facebook were found out where they willingly took money from kids and encouraged kids to spend their parents' credit card money on games, you know, on the games on the platform. And they knew internally it was happening. There was a couple of people, like whistleblowers, I guess, yeah. uh, took it to the, the top and it just got, you know, blown away, covered over it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's the, the networks have a responsibility. When you look at something like that and you're happy to get kids to spend three, $5,000 yeah. on Candy Crush. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. See, and this is the thing. So, like, you and know, that your addiction again. I want to get the, the, the community guy in me says we need to, I mean, we wouldn't be very Canadian if we didn't say <laughs> we need to look out for our fellow men, yeah. right? We, it's important that we live in a, in a society that is healthy for the benefit of all, not mm-hmm. just, you know, educated, but healthy. And this is part of it. But at the same time, I really don't like the idea of a business being told that it can't market in a particular way or that it, it can't build its business in a particular way because uh, we, we want to allow free enterprise to thrive. Uh, you know, so there's that middle ground that I think mm-hmm. this is where we're coming to a head, I guess is really, and, you know, maybe circling back to how I started this. This is really on my mind now because of the social media camp uh, uh, presentation that I'm doing. And I'm going to be putting out a call to action to all the marketers. And this is the biggest social media event in Canada. It happens once a year. This is their 10th year. And this year, what I'm going to do is all the marketers that are going to be in the room and listening online, because I think it's going to be live streamed again. I'm going to be issuing a challenge to marketers, to business people to say, we have a responsibility. If we can self-regulate so that we are not regulated, because eventually that's what's going to happen. The way the cigarette industry was Mm -hmm. regulated, the way the game gambling industry was, was regulated, social media will get regulated because of the number of suicides the number of broken marriages, yeah. like just the, the amount of negativity that is being happened. You know, the elections are being hacked through social yeah. media. I mean, there's just so much distrust right now that is happening. There's just so much harm to our physical and mental beings, our political state, our social well-being, that it's it's inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable. We're 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 running to a break point, which is really the the, the topic of that presentation I'm gonna do. We're hitting this break point where something is going to have to happen, some big, big event. And if, and if it wasn't the hacking of an election, it wasn't all of these suicides that are happening now directly related to our increased usage of social yeah. media. I mean, that's, you know, and for those of you that don't think there's a direct correlation between social media and, and, and suicides, one of the studies that I've, that I've been doing is I've charted the number of suicides in North America over the last uh, 20 years, 25 years. And it was going down, mm. surprisingly, up until around 2010, 2014, in that range. All right. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, around 2010, it started to do this. So that's when like the Facebook and the Twitters were at their peak and really that's when they the launched. users, right? That's when they launched, right? In that 2010 to 2011, well, 2014. Well, 2006, Facebook came to the public. Came, right? oh, but that's the when they got peak, big. Yeah, the peak time. Right. right. So, And what I detected is right when they sort of became really popular and mainstream, all of a sudden, suicide rates started to go up. And now that they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, suicide rates have just been this hockey stick effect that's happened. Right. So, you know what I mean? This is why all these universities now are studying the effects of online usage and mental health. And the the correlations are there, right? There is, and you can just see it. People are are saying it themselves. Students are telling me directly. So uh, we don't have the time in this podcast to go through all of the details. Maybe Maybe a future podcast topic though. It could be, um, you know, or so on the friendshipbench.org. I think we're going to, I want to share some of these statistics that I've been finding, some of the lessons learned. And of course, I'll be talking about it at social media camp. But in the meantime, for, for the purposes of this conversation, you know, I, I want to focus it back to the business. You know, our time is running up here. We don't have our bell because we started <laughs> drinking early this morning. So ding, 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 ding. That's our last call here. Um, let's, let's end this with how does this impact businesses? How does this impact the marketing industry and the businesses that hire the marketing industry? What should they do? What are they obligated to do? I do like the idea of self-regulation that you, you brought up because I think, if, as you mentioned, if we don't you know, regulate ourselves and, and put processes into place that we can sort of control 
how we, you know, send a message out to people, yeah. then someone will step in and take that control away from us. And right. it's, like you said, it's happened. So I do like the, the idea of self-regulation. And if that comes to the point of say, okay, we know by uh, cookie data on our website where people go next. Mm. And if we're seeing that these guys are always on social after visit and a marketing message from our website, should we be retargeting these guys or should we be giving them a break and not advertising on social in front of them, giving them a little break that way? I'm not sure. I, I, it's a tough one because it's, like you say, we're marketers. We need to make money. Our clients need to make money. Yeah. But we have kids. We have you know family members. We have responsibilities to these guys and the kids coming through at schools and yeah. the university that you've been speaking to. So for my takeaway, I'm sorry. I don't have a, a solid answer this week. I know. Th- th- this is a tough one. And I think it's going to end up in the climate change type debate. You know, the naysayers and right. the supporters. People are going to say, no, it's not. Social media is not affecting us. But I think it is. Not only because from a business perspective, all you have to do is look at, forget the social side of it. Forget, you know, whether you're altruistic or not. Take a look at the fact that people are taking digital vacations. How many people do we know that are now off of Facebook completely or off of Twitter completely? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many people are leaving these platforms, right? And Facebook knows it, yeah. right? And another reason why they're trying to gamify is to keep us on more and more. So as a business, well, we, we've, we're actually drying up this community. Yeah. We're drying up the opportunities that we have to engage with people. So we, we've either got to find new platforms you know, or develop some different type of platform, or we can take a step back, understand what this is doing to our society and say, okay, we need to fix this now right. before we lose this brilliant opportunity to market and communicate with our audience. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether you, you agree with it or not, the stats are there. Um, you know what I mean? I think this is something that we have to do. So that's my takeaway. I believe we need to step up as a business, as marketers, as, uh, as, you know, manufacturers, retailers, wherever, whoever you are in this industry, I think we need to step up and take a leadership role before they come down and say, um, you know, or we lose all of this audience because yeah. we have that break point or there's some regulation that completely limits our ability to market in this industry. So anyway, there is no right or wrong answer to this. This is something we can talk about forever, I think, but our time is up. Thanks everybody for paying uh, attention, uh, for joining us again, whether you're listening to us on our audio or on our podcast, if you want, or uh, video. Video, yep. <laughs> and if you want to keep following us. Yeah, if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the little bell notification at the top so you get new notifications. Please hit the subscribe and like buttons. We love that all the time. We'd love to hear your comments on this topic. We think it's a really interesting one and we'd love to hear you guys, uh, you know, what you're thinking of it. And, you know, Subscribe on your favorite podcast channel. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, Cheers guys. Take care. Jenna, I want that beer back. <laughs> <laughs>